Right now, what I'm doing is making orders. I don't know whether I put a marker on the Americano because I want to order, let's say, a cup of latte. I say whether I can make the order. So basically, it can make a reaction on your hand. So let's say we make an order for a cup of Americano. All right, you can see this is under operation. So it's with both hands, and we also can see right now the a progress of making coffee right now is around 30% finishing. So just by simply clicking the order, and you can see the whole process are processing by itself. So this is a lot of different kinds of scenarios for you to choose from. This is just give you a taste of how to make a coffee by AI. So this is the interaction between human being and a machine. So not just basically make coffee, make rice, cook rice, or other things. Actually, all are available choices. So later on, I believe the robot can make you a very nice dinner on the table so they can really share the burden of all the housewives. So look at how flexible it is for the robot arms. You can see this is the coordination between both hands. So you can see actually we give it a larger range of movement. So you can look at the blue ones, actually, that's the uh, different parts of the arm. So basically divided into seven parts. So it's like the human being's joints. So with more joints, more flexibilities, for sure. So also same as human beings, we have three joints per arm. And here we go, the coffee is ready. So this is what I ordered Americano. <laughs> so this is just for you, and unfortunately we didn't got the certificate, so it's not really ready now for you to taste, but just give you a kind of the a sense how the machine can make a cup of coffee. So let's look at more choices. We look at this one, besides making coffee, this is so. The one before, look, is more for the household scenario, and this is for the industrial scenario. So we look at right now is upload material. And we're now coming to the assembly area. So look at the both sides. Actually, they have wheel gears. So they will do the maneuver by themselves. So you can see they will do the self-adjustment. So from the material loading to the assembly area, this is for the assembly. So this is the three wheel gears. Uh, do a little bit self adjustment. And look at this one. So pull it very slowly, and uh, during the whole course, they will find the best position, best angle for assembly. So this is right now we can say it's a higher precise. So this can make a 0 
millimeter. So this is for demonstration, but I can tell this is really precise. So 0 0.02 millimeter. I can tell this number really ahead of the whole industry. So we talk this like the collaborative robot. So this is kind of the collaboration between human being and machine. So this is not traditionally we call the industrial robot. It's different. So before, it's like industrial robot only can perform the job by itself. But right now, what we are doing here is actually this is safer and it's a collaboration or cooperation between human being and the robot. So this is our beginning of our live stream. Let's go ahead to see what are the highlights in made in China area. So this is the first open source platform for making parts right, for the aviation or for the military machineries. So this is for the nuclear power plant. And going forward, we see this C919. This is the first self-made passenger flight. So we look at this area, there's a lot of made in China results, so a lot of highlights. So here is talk about Chinese companies, their achievement in the past four decades. We talk about the AI as a part of the computer technology. So basically a robot with AI application, so this can precise data, pictures, images. So there's a movie in 2001 called AI, so talk about the future development between human being and the machine, whether machine with intelligence and plus emotion, whether that will replace human being. It's a scientific movies but really an inspiring movie so talk about what will be the future or what the future look like especially the relations between human being and the machine we talk about whether ai will replace human beings this is kind of the questions asked by a lot of people we don't know the answer, but we can tell you is like AI really can make our life easier. So this is the AI robot or machine making operation. So we talk about this is the first of its kind. Make a operation for the orthopedics department. So we talk about this can making operations, can cooking meals. So this is provide really make our life easier, provide a lot of convenience for human beings. And this is another home of plants. So this is the customized look and feel. So what this here about is basically, so this is your home and you put all different kinds of DA furniture on your 
Purchase list. So you talk about this with your designer. So talk about what kind of the room you want to build, what kind of the furniture you would like. So basically, put all the your want everything here inside, so you can look at your living room, your kitchen, how it will look like with everything you want inside. So we have the VR glasses. So what exactly they are looking at? So what are you looking at? So I really, really myself inside this room. I'm looking at this is living room. So this is the scene of living room. So. So basically, these are very familiar to me. So basically, you're doing a 360 degree to provide you a whole look of the living room. I think this feels so good. So this is a 3D look and feel. So whatever is from this screen, you will see it through our VR class. And also, you can scan this QR code. So we will provide you a closer look through AR, through VR. And this is already commercialized. So this is the more for your customized service. So talk about what kind of the size of your house. So you enter a lot of data here, and it will provide you the virtual environment. So let's continue our journey. So today we also have a lot of people here. So this is a grand exhibition open in Beijing to commemorate the 40th anniversary of China's reform and open up. There are a lot of fun stuff here waiting for our viewers to come. So ahead is more about the a infrastructure construction. So talk about our Fuxing Railway. So this is a really high-speed railway in China. I believe this is the fastest one around the world. This is a experience for you to really drive the train by yourself. So this is a fast traveling train. You can experience how it really feels like to drive this kind of fast rail train. So, how are you feeling? So actually, I experienced the Fuxing train as a passenger, but I didn't see this kind of wheel before. So I drive by yours by, by myself. It's a total new experience. So I've also experienced Chinese speed. So we gear up, so which means you increase the speed, you need to press the button and reach 350 kilometers per hour, and then you can release the button. So this is the real function, it's the same as the real Fuxing train. So this is the 100% same as the real Fuxing train, so we can tell you the network of railway actually connected all the cities. So especially the largest train, the largest cities. So this is a really convenient, and a lot of people actually choose railway as their key travel means. So like between Beijing and Shanghai, and you can travel just within one day. 
and Beijing to Tianjin just within 30 hours one way. And this is another our self-design, self-developed. Palos carpet. So this is the palos. <laughs> So the cockpit actually, I believe, is the same as you on board an airplane. So this is our self-developed cockpit. It is for the a training for the pilot training or for the research purpose. Another highlight is here we go. This is the passenger flight. So this is also a QR code. You can scan it and also with your ID card you can print out your mileage. And talk about the DS recordings. I believe we're quite familiar with it. So here are the whole the highlights we talk about. This is the name card of China. All these actually well known projects going on in China. We talk about the railway. We talk about the self developed passenger flight. The three gorgeous projects. A lot of interactive parts for our viewers here. You can really experience the fast speed of China's development, and especially during the past four decades. Like a look at the energy consumption mix. We talk about the clean energy right now. Is the a top priority. So let's look at from the 1978. Till now. So at the very beginning, the fossil energy or the fossil fuels, the percentage from 70% to a single number. So we can tell we step by step change our energy consumption mix. And we also talk about the power generation. This is also generated by the clean energy. So we talk about like 10 years ago, you could not really talk about these, all these kind of the mega projects. We talk about the AI or smart technologies, actually all these are changes every day. So this is the Everest. And this is the a zone showcase that we built. The telecommunication infrastructure and also the power stations on the top of the Everest. And we talk a look at our phones, smartphones, the whole development. Right now we talk about at least right now people have at least one smartphone at hand and some of them have two and even three smartphones. And very soon we're entering to an age of 5G. So through all these pictures, we can really experience the fast development in the past four decades. 
时候我们是要就是擦肩而过，越过人群啊，尤其是到一些啊非常有亮点、有特色展区，可以看到是。So a lot of people are actually coming to see all the DCC exhibitions in Beijing. To commemorate the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. So look at the Chinese private sectors. They also paid a great contribution to China's development, and also lent the great energy to the China's GDP growth. And this is a, the a public sector. So we talk about the a public sectors and the private sectors. The state-owned companies actually they also paid a lot of contribution to China's development, especially in the building construction area. <laughs> and look at the coal mine area. Look at the underground coal mine. How that look like underground? And also through VR, we show exactly what happened under the ground. So the coal mining. And right now I'm looking at the forest and the coal under the forest. This is the first time you were in VR. Not my first time, but this is the first time for me to look at the whole coal mining process through VR glasses. 3D facts, I believe this is really what I'm looking at is the real scenario. So we look at right now for the coal mining. We want to make it in a really green, safe manner. And I will also show you the whole progress, how that's developed and upgraded through the whole journey of the 40 years. So we talk about right now our coal mining actually is very intelligent. So that is also why we show you this. This is the real technology we're using. <laughs> so let's look at another coffee maker. Let's also look at the how accurate or flexible the machine arm or the robot arm can help us. And ladies, here are for you. So the mirrors, the magic mirrors. So we're right now changing the hairstyle, changing the clothes, and also the makeup. Everything can change. If you want to have a long legs, a very sharp body, all are possible here. So right now the lady is choosing the makeups. We talk about the double eleven just finished. It's a big shopping party for the Chinese citizens or the netizens. So the whole machine here actually like talk about like we we help you to narrow the gap between the real effect or the real scenario and your imagination. So we have you to do the head to toe coordination and to talk about your desired shopping list items, how that will look on you. So like for the evening dresses, 
or the sportswear. So this can also develop to an app. So actually, I can check whenever I want. And also for talk about the shopping malls, this is also quite convenient. And we also can place orders by click a button, and we will wait the package at home. Save time, save energy. So also can save on your smartphone. Let me try a little bit. So it's a 3D modeling. Uh, right here we go. So you can choose the hairstyle, body shape, makeup. But for me, I think long hair is good for me. So let me get on what kind of dress I like. The coat. So this is good for fall and winter. And uh, let's look at another style. Even dress. Very nice. I can wear this to attend a gala this evening. Another casual look. Nice. Okay, I'll say. I say change my hairstyle. So short hair. <laughs> oh, right, I believe right now it's cutting the hair, so it's take a little bit of time. Go from long hair to short ones. Oh, right, here we go. The body. <laughs> oh, keep it as it is. And what about the makeups? The look. <laughs> So take a little bit of time to do some makeup. All right. A little bit mature look. Let's save it. All right. So this is really convenient and help our ladies to save time. So we can really change different looks, different dress. So that help you to really coordinate from the head to toe, from the hairstyle to the facial, to the makeups, to all different kinds of the clothes. So this part is a civil aviation. So we also have the robot. Actually, you can talk to the robot. So it's helping to increase efficiency and also can provide some guidance. And we also have quite an interesting conversation, actually. Another one is also good for interaction. What is? 
as the national grid. It's a game. To let our viewers know how difficult it is when we build this kind of extreme high voltage grid. So this is an interactive game to let our viewers or the visitors know how difficult it is to lay it or to really check the actual high voltage. So there are different scenarios. So if you walk fast, then the character will walk fast. So before we also had a live stream talk about DA people where our staffs really laid the actual high voltage in Xizang, in Tibet. So we also have different kind of the tasks to perform. So this is the real situation that during their daily checkup. So we need to fix the problem and also choose the correct tools to help to clear the trouble. So we choose the second tools. So we talk about the mallet, that's the first tool that basically see to break the ice under this kind of the snowing season. Look at our sand table. That also showcase the export of our high voltage. That's also our first project overseas. We provide the power to one tenth the population. So that's around 22 million people. So I believe there are a lot of story happened behind the scene because look at the whole situation here because we need to cross the Amazon forest and also the Indian traps and also need to think about how we can protect all the environment, animals. So this is the in Brazil. Brazil has really strict policies in environmental protection. The National Grid actually did a lot of research work survey and how to build the whole voltage while protecting the environment, protecting the animals. So for the whole distance of the voltage lines around 2,500 kilometers. So look at the power line. So this to city Leo, and I see a population high population density cities. So help to reduce the carbon emission. So we talk about this, you can consider us a energy revolution. So our state-owned companies go abroad to help developing countries and also the countries along about the growth initiative route. Let's see going forward and we will see more fun part. 
And we can see there will be a long line up there. This is something you must do or must see. So this is a pencil sketch that will do a sketch within two minutes. So you can see a long line up here. This is a robot. We do a sketch. Our portrait. So this is very nice look. So our painter, this is traditional look of painter. So our robot is right now doing a sketch. So I see there's a really long line up here. So what exactly behind? So first, actually, we basically take a picture. So we look at our object. We first take a picture of the object, and then we. There's an app here. So we basically make these pictures inside the system, and the robot will basically, based on these pictures, make its own route. So how to start and where to finish. So this is a very large picture. So for the robot, you need to first analyze the key object and then organize the whole route of painting. How long does it take? Uh, three to five minutes. You know, for the ladies, it will be a little bit longer because they have a really long hair that take a little bit of time. So for the gentlemen, so I believe that will be average three times. So for the morning session, we can see we, let's say, five or six minutes per person. Per day, we'll basically, our painters will draw 100 people. So this is a really interesting to us. This is something really new in the new era, so I would like to experience a little bit. So this is something really new to our generation, so we believe we should give it a try. This something for our generation is unbelievable. So let's wait and see whether it's so close to the real person. Let's see the portrait. And also, our robot painter can say, I see whether you're satisfied or not. Can we take it? So it's, can we take it? Can we take it up? <laughs> so that's like whether it's, it's looks the same. For our viewers, what do you think? In a very short time, three to five minutes, a pencil or pen sketch is done. Just three to five minutes. But of course, you should wait in the line first. 
个特别不习惯，但是你看我们的这个参观者还是络绎不绝。So the robot basically will first take a picture and will analyze the features of the objects, especially the face facial features. And then the robot will analyze the route, how to start the sketch and where to finish. So don't forget to wait in the line for this robot painter. And this is a grand exhibition open in Beijing to commemorate the 40th anniversary of China reform. And opening up, this is right now undergoing a national museum. So this is the technologies we use for deep sea research. So this is named Deep Sea Warrior. So this is submersible, or we talk about the, the a submersible shape or a UV, so we use this kind of to do the uh, deep sea research, relief and rescue. And this is also an interactive part, so through the glasses you can know exactly what's going on in, in the deep sea. So right now for our country, we develop a lot in deep sea research, rescue field. So this is also the self-development where we talk about the national technology, technological re results that we developed in the past four decades. So let's talk to our visitors. So we really want to know what are you looking at? So I believe that's the submarine or the turtles. Right now, we are coming to 2,500 meters below the surface, below the sea surface. So right now, really approaching to 300 meter. How do you feel? Good. So this is how it looks like deep sea. That's around 3,000 meters below. Different kind of fishes, different plants, and vivid colors. And I believe I also see the sea bat. So just with the VR, Glasses will show you the beauty of the sea. So this is China's self-developed technology for the deep sea area. We are right now in a submersible ship. So this is bring us to the 3,000 meter below the sea surface. And also can, through different machines, we can also operate the robot arms. So 
All right, let's continue. So for our viewers, if you are really interested, because there are a lot of people actually coming here every day, and there are a lot of different interactive parts for you to experience. So I believe I suggest you, our viewers, please come here either early morning or come in the afternoon, the time approaching closing time. So it's oh no. The fast. I don't know whether through the glasses or through the vast glasses we can talk to the aliens. So this is really encouraging news actually for the Chinese people. This is our self-developed fast. So this is the great contribution made by China to the whole world. So through FAST, it right now help us help the whole human being find around 50 new pulsar so that opened a new window for us to study the whole universe and the space. So besides the giant project like FAST, we also have a lot of like the a bell signs achievements. Right now also show us a lot of the advanced level results that China achieved in bioscience. All these show us the Chinese muscles in different areas, and we also make the ground breaking achievements in different sectors. <laughs> and we are to see the cologne monkeys. Let's see how we can talk to the monkeys. So look at this is the whole journey of the cologne history. So from the cologne ship. And we also have the visitors really like all these kind of the interactions. So let's first take a picture. I see how we can talk to the clone monkeys. And we see the two monkeys here waving a hand. Clone macaques. And this is a QR code. <laughs> so let's try again. All right, let's let's take a picture first. The two macaques. Maybe a hand. All right, and then they scan the QR code, and you can save it on your phone. So this is all showcase the a groundbreaking results that China achieved in the bioscience field. So look at this one, this is really 
the cutting edge technology. So through this kind of screen, you can see whatever you want to see. So for here, what is display right now is 3D printing model. Uh, also another QR code for you. So whatever you want to know on this screen of regarding the energy, regarding the power supply, it's just not only limited to China. If you want to know the other places around the world, I believe that's also possible. So this is the power generated in the western part of China and also help you to divide it into different categories that are power generated by burning energies, like burning fossil fuels, or generated from water, like hydraulic, clean energy that actually you can see all these are actually movable. So look at the clean energy. I will show you how much power it generated. So when we put this the globe here, I will show you the picture of the whole globe. So look at the whole world. Let's look at the energy consumption around the world. So this is PV. So when we put the globe on the screen, they will show you the whole power generated around the world. And we can look at the Asia, Europe, Africa. And you can turn, look at the different countries, how are they doing in the clean energy? What about Belt and the Rose root countries? What are they doing in terms of the green energy consumption? So we look at the power generated by wind, by clean energy, by thermals, by hydraulics. So we show you a really clear picture about the whole mix. So from 1978 till now, that's over the past of four decades, we look at the whole energy mix, how that changed over the four decades. So here we look at that this is a time frame from 1978. So we show you that the a power generated around the world. So China really rank to the middle to the late part. So we can see at the top is the United States. And ranks number seven, the power that generated annually. So that's before the establishment of PRC. Let's look at the 1949. <laughs> So this gives you a ranking around the world in terms of the generating capacity. So at the very beginning, I believe a lot of power actually generated by burning kerosene. And then the energy consumption mix actually also improved. And look at the 1998, the power generating capacity rank number two for China. So the whole system actually self-developed by the national grid. So this is, I believe, the largest in China, so we we'll show you the different scenes. So we we'll look at the 
smart energy mix. So you look at the whole time frame from the beginning of the PRC establishment till now, and we also look at the whole globe. So this is the a uh, first of its kind, the smart display system. So we also look at the 2009, and we also look at the different time frame and also the different milestones. When was the first time China built its first hydro ultra voltage power line? And to the 2018, we have around look at the different lines. This is all the ultra high voltage power line. And for the green ones, right now it's under construction. So the through the whole display on the screen, we show you the whole history of how the power or the electricity developed in China. <laughs> so different mark actually represent different scenes. So put the mark on the screen. We also have to change the display. So there are all different markers. So the screen will show the different scenes. So this is the building represents the household power usage. And we also have talk about the thermal power generation, the thermal plant, wind power. And we also look at the offshore wind plant. To solve the environmental pollution issues, we believe China right now is really doing its hard work to use more clean energies or the renewable energy. So look at the western part of China. They use more clean energies like the a the wind, the hydraulic, different ways of the uh, new energies or the renewable energies. And for the eastern part, this part actually they use less clean energy. So we can see the smog. So you can see the smoke that the, represents the environmental pollution. So we talk about wind power generation. So we build up, you look at this, is the three channels. That's the channels of ultra high voltage power line. So we basically generate the powers through clean energy and we transmit the clean energy or the electricity from the western to the eastern area. So we we'll hope to see more blue skies in Beijing. To look at the clean energy. So we generate more power through the clean energy. So we show you actually this is the a very balanced way to transmit our power. If we generate, let's say, the total number is fixed. If we generate more power through clean energy, which means we will generate less power through burning fossil fuels or coal.
So here also show you the different projects, the Pala projects. So at the back, this is a card. You put at anywhere on this screen to help you to show the videos because behind the card is a QR code. So the screen will scan the code automatically. So we'll show you the different scenes and the different ways to look at how the power generated and the power mix in China. So this is the, a very friendly interaction between human being and the machine. And the third scene, a look at the bigger picture. So this is the whole globe. Look at the different continent. We we'll look at the China, look at Africa, and we we'll also look at the wind power where it generates more. And close to the equator, I believe more power actually will be generated. By PV. So you turn the globe. I will show you a different continent. And we'll also look at the belt and road root countries. This is our master plan under the BRI framework. We also want to pr provide DA connectivity uh, linking all the BRI countries to build a shared future with all the BRI root countries. So link the 9,000 kilometers. So this is the energy connectivity project. By 2020, we want to achieve the a domestic connectivity. So we show you from the west to the east part of China, or in the future maybe from the north to the south. So the energy will be connected. So make sure there is no blackout. So whenever we want to use electricity, it's possible and sufficient. So I can tell you the grid in China is the most or the tower is the strongest and more resilient one around the world. We talk about because of hurricane or the natural disasters is really bring a huge impact to the power lines. So we talk about the power lines in China and also the power stations are linking the world in terms of the a power protection and also the power lines is really strong and resilient. So we can tell you our power lines really competitive around the world. We talk about very intelligent technologies. So when the trouble happens, we see in one second and make decision and take action. And our master plan for the future is want to achieve connectivity among the different continents. 
among different seasons. And right now, we also do the DEA tradings and the services. So you also can generate the power by yourself. And also, the, uh, you can consume the power generated by your PV facilities. And also, for the uh, sufficient or the abundant one, also can sell to the national grid. So we'll talk about our overlook to the future is want to connect the power lines around the globe that are really realized connectivity and the shared future. So we talk about the made in China, we talk about the Chinese companies, we talk about our self-developed technologies, all these cutting edge technologies that we not just bring the benefit to the Chinese people, we also bring the benefits, tangible benefits to the people around the world. And tomorrow we will show you more here. This is the ground exhibition opened in Beijing to commemorate the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. We talk about the mega projects and also a lot of the highlights in China. We'll also show you more tomorrow, talk about anything that happened. From the space to the sky to the land to the sea. That's coming to the end of our live stream. I hope you can stay with us. And I also can see you tomorrow. This is CGTN bringing you from the National Museum. This is our exhibition regarding the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. Please stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow.